Hi, I'm uh, Shobhana Chelya. I'm the director of CORSO, the Computational Resource for South Asian Languages. And I'm here in Malmö, Sweden. Uh, we're really lucky. Uh, I and our uh, collections um, manager, Mary Burke, are visiting uh, Dr. Inga Lil Hansen. And we are so excited to be here because we are uh, experiencing uh, her hospitality and also seeing the wealth of information that she's collected over her lifetime on the language and the people of the uh, of Aka community uh, from Thailand. And so we've, we're uh, happy now to have a conversation with her about her, her work with the Aka and her life experiences there. And we just have a few short questions. We'd really just like to hear you speak more. But just to start the conversation, I wanted to ask you, if you can tell us how you started out working with the ACA. I started when I was, when I was thinking I was going to stay in classical Chinese forever. This was my field, the university from the beginning. But then I went, I went to Taiwan for three years to study classical Chinese. And um, during that time, the Nordic Institute for Asian Studies had a field station in Lampang in northern Thailand. There was a group of us with, uh, leading by, led by Professor Søren Eru, the professor of Chinese, now deceased, Vigo Brun, a Norwegian who was teaching Thai and interested. And we got an informant, an Ica informant down to Lampang and starting learning to do field work. What do you do with it? How do you approach it? How do you write it down? You had the help of a dictionary made by um, Paul Lewis, an Aka English dictionary. And so we started. We did that. I went uh, from Taiwan for a short visit, starting on it. And then um, after three years, I went home. Back to, my home was in Copenhagen then at the East Asian Department of Chinese Studies and um, got an informant later to, to Copenhagen from uh, Aka in Thailand and worked for some time with him learning how to deal with a foreign language, right. learning it and how you make notes and how you transcribe it. Yes. And then um, after some time doing that, I was uh, looking for a scholarship for two years at the University of Copenhagen and I had to decide between Chinese forever or Aka. I took the decision to go into Aka to do field work and I was very much based on later on that the first Sino-Tibetan conference the ninth one was uh, getting uh, going abroad, according to Paul Benedict's terms. And um, I met the uh, scholars from the field at the conference, who were curious about field work. And I decided to vote for, or to uh, ask for scholarship to um, go to work with ACA first. I got a scholarship mm -hmm. and left few weeks later for East Asia and the... Uh, what was the date then? 71. I mean, okay. No, that was later. Then I went to Taiwan first and the Chinese and came back in three years later. Mm -hmm. I think it was 77, 70, 1990, 70, 98 or something. Uh -huh. Somewhere in the... 78, something. Something like that. Right. And uh, Burma was closed for foreigners. Laos was not open either. China was not possible either to do. But Thailand was open. Mm -hmm. So I went there and um, had some contacts by letter, getting a research permit from the Thai Research Council to go and do ACA. So I went to Northern Thailand and there was an, an Aka center, a hill tribe center where they did dancing and so on. Okay. And I went there 
Il compte avec sa marque. Un fond de man, called the Asso, and uh, wanted to go to the village. Mm -hmm. And I went to him, his old, his old village, and found some Aka there, of course, and started to see if I could find a, what you call in English by now, consultant. Right. And I found one. I stayed with one old man, a basket maker of the village, in his house and work with uh, Pima, uh, 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 a resi reciting spe uh, the specialist in reciting. They were all analphabets, couldn't read and write, but they learned it all by heart. And what is the, what is the Pima? Pima is a ritual specialist, as a term for his... He re is a reciter of the village, mm -hmm. recite at deaths and sickness, mm -hmm. calling souls back. So I started by asking general questions, like us around, I mean, how, how are you, where are you going, and that's to learn the basic language. Looking through Thai, which I had got a rough, uh, rough, rush course in at the University of Copenhagen, I went there, asking about everything I saw, to getting the, the names of it in Aka, mm -hmm. building it up, saying, oh, I thought it's a buffalo, but it's a big buffalo, it's a small buffalo, I want to buy a buffalo. Where is the buffalo? Continue like that, building up a teaching material for myself right. while learning the language. And I did for two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see those in your notebooks, very detailed notes that you took on, on all those things when you were learning the language. In the beginning, there was much notebooks about uh, asking what's a simple question in Aka, mm -hmm. producing it in Thai, slowly I can do it in Aka, and then put variations on it, and figure it out, analyzing it, mm -hmm. and went on. So you had to learn Thai first? First Thai, yes. Because uh, they spoke kind of, uh, they spoke unfortunately Northern Thai, I learned Standard Thai, there are so many linguistic problems when you start learning another language because they refer to to the minor, to the majority language of the country where they are in. Right. So I went slowly, I worked my way. I got a house, I lived in a house in Chiang Mai, which I needed, there was no electricity, no toilets. And I had to sit down with a tape recorder and taped it all. Mm -hmm. And I had to go back to Chiang Mai to work for a month or so, and then go back to the village to get more material. Oh, yeah. Getting down to Chiang Mai to write it out and find slips and new words I got. How long would you stay in the village? Usually, I went to and fro, usually once a month. Okay. I can't remember, so it was very, it varied. Mm -hmm. Now then I stayed there for some months, and now and then I went for a week or two, and then back to Chiang Mai to transcribe it all, getting back next time to the village, checking it out. Mm -hmm. I've done it wrong, uh, rightly. We figured out the phonemic system of Aka. Did you transcribe it just by listening to the tapes, or did you have a speaker with a you? A speaker with me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I got a um, uh, speaker in the village first, mm -hmm. then going back to write down what I learned, and getting back to check it again. At a certain time, I had an informant living with me mm -hmm. in the Chiang Mai, repeating after the tape. Mm -hmm. Right. So, how long did this 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 part of your fieldwork take? Two years. And then you came to Copenhagen, and you brought the speaker with you, or brought some speakers. No, with no, you. that was before that. That was before. That that's, was right, before. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I went on. I saw the rituals, uh -huh. saw the swing in the village, listened to the songs. I became quite popular because I recorded it all. I can play it on a, a guy passing by singing a song. <laughs> like can replay it. Yeah. Slowly writing it down and learning and understanding it. Wonderful. Yeah, so the, the Aka people themselves appreciated what you were doing and they were able to listen. <sighs> to listen to it. Yes, my tape recorder was quite popular. Yeah. It was a batteries because of no electricity. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a difficult life then, being going there, there was no electricity and 
you were saying that... Uh, oh, it was a beautiful life. Oh, beautiful life, yeah. Walked up the mountain from the nearest bus station. Uh -huh. What were some of the most memorable uh, things that you remember about village life? About uh, going around in the village, listening to people, yeah. asking whatever I saw, what is that in Aka, mm -hmm. be, be building up a vocabulary, mm -hmm. and slowly follow the year's ritual, mm -hmm. ancestral offerings, yeah. oh, uh, making special ritual for the new rice to be planted, mm -hmm. for the growing rice, for the harvest of the rice, mm -hmm. following every season. Listen to the rain coming, and the monsoon rain is coming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it must have been very beautiful. Working out the particles of the language. To say it's raining, I hear it's raining, I saw it raining, and wet. Right. And going on, building it up slowly. Right. And then getting back slowly also to getting stories, asking to tell a story, asking them to tell a story, writing that down, Exten extending my vocabulary all the time. Well, so you've shared with us, you know, as, as we've been here for a few days about your village life, but can you also say something more about the linguistics of it? What were some of the exciting discoveries? You mentioned particles. Were there other things that were uh, very interesting to you, that you pursued? But I ended up with, uh, slowly being curious about the ritual language, mm -hmm. hearing ritual, the recitations, mm -hmm. There's so many every year, different parts of the year, the yearly rituals, and uh, going with the uh, with, uh, Pima mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. and slowly turning over when I pass the basic stage, you go to the ritual texts, the recitations, and that I'm still working for the rest of my life with. Yeah, there's a lot to do, right? Yes. So you started out with a pen and pencil, and you have I think we counted about 138 notebooks, all yes. well numbered and uh, indexed with your with your your tape recordings. So, d and when did you switch from working on paper to working on the computer? That was years later. Yeah, it's all on pen and paper. Yeah. So then you were transferring things from your notebook. Yes, that's all in notebooks. Yes, and type and then I slowly typed them in the typewriter. Oh yeah. And that was, took, that took me years to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we wanted to talk about was your, you, you, you've written so much on Akka now. And something that we've done the past three days is we've been looking through a lot of your published work. We've gone through your bookshelves and we've looked at the articles you've written. And there's things that you haven't published, but you've presented um, at many conferences. ICSTLL, very regularly. Mm -hmm. And so do, do you want to say something about some of the things that you've published that you find, uh, you know, you would like everybody to know about and be good for people to read if they want to know about Akka. I've written various aspects of the grammar uh, uh, presented at the conferences, the Southern Tibetan ones. But the work we have was more fascinated by myself was to figure out how the how they learn the ritual language, they learn by heart. The people I worked with was in, I've studied for 40 years or so before he could dare to have a death ritual himself, uh -huh. to do the recitation for three days and nights. And, uh, and I was asking myself, how do we one remember all this and what is the system? Right. Apart from then you were one in the morning you do this and then it comes the evening and you do, do this and all those kind of things. And it's going uphill and going downhill and but then I realized that um, that there was another syntax in the richer language than it is in the vernacular language. So I started to work on it. It was a fascinating thing to work on. With the help of making concordances with the help of a friend of mine, so on. I had to make a concordance. I wrote it out and made a concordance of the Akka. I worked at it the whole summer. And uh, realizing slowly that uh, there was a, there was a, the, 
say the syntax roughly of the uh, the same as the vernacular language. But um, for example, you say in Aka, homazamo, rice dot eat want. I don't want to have any rice. Okay. That you never find in the ritual language. Because the, the negation has to come just in front of the verb, uh -huh. followed by a verb, and some particles, noun particles, have instrumental particles, for example, by mother, and the interplay between the prefixes mm -hmm. and, um, and the negation, the suffixes. For example, mother is ama, two syllables in Aka. But if you were to say by mother, amane, the particle ne instrument, you say bane, you skip the prefix a, uh -huh. you have the main syllable ma, bane by mother. If you want to say give to mother, you say ma on, you can't say ama on mm -hmm. with the object marker, mm -hmm. you use the main syllable ma on to mother. In the ritual language. And then I wonder what do we do, what do, does the language do? And I found out, uh, by help of the corners I made, that um, if you had a filler syllable, yeah. la or lo, ma lo manga, to make, to push the negation to its right place according to syntactic laws. And I, I went hunting, I spent a beautiful summertime in Copenhagen, just working day and night on to figure out what, uh, how did that work. And it sounds... and after the help of the, the concourse is made, mm -hmm. to get them on the line and see what, what does the language do. Find the rhythmic pairs, I call them, in an article I wrote. Ama mange or mane mange, and that works, I think, because I remember I checked it. One text I had, I heard um, the pima reciting, and then it came wrong on the syllables, and it had a long drawn out vowel, because it didn't feel right for him, mm -hmm. because he violated the rules. Ah. Or the grammar for reach your language. I can hear that he was he got wrong on the line and uh, prolonged it. And I asked him also to uh, to make recitations. Mm -hmm. And I was there. I could, could, I can uh, put it on all on the, my tape recorder. I'm still working on that. For the death reach shelf is a huge. It takes few hundred pages to type it into 30 lines on a page. Wow. This is my next project to get that out before I die. That is, that's a, a big project, yeah. It sounds like uh, that uh, you, the concordancing was a, um, a big part of your being able to do, make this discovery. I was helped by my son. Yes, we hope to, to do the, him as well. To do that. Yeah. And then I worked with it, I was getting it a each syllable yeah. to find those words and find those negations and you uh -huh. and see where I was standing. Mm -hmm. And then I, later on I also asked the, the Pima, I, I, I thought it was fun that I now and then train myself and speaking the richer language. That was a laugh. <laughs> Very difficult. I getting down, the, uh, getting down and falling on the pig. I remember I said that in a richer language. And he was laughing heartily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your attempts. It, so, it was so interesting to do. It took me months and months, after having spent years learning the language, yeah. writing it down after the tape recorders and figuring out the system of it. That was the most fun thing I've done in my life, I think. That's wonderful. So you actually had to learn the Akka very well in order to then be able to do this. To understand the ritual language, 
first understanding the meaning of it, mm-hmm. then figure out the system of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it really takes that deep linguistic work to I get to, yeah. to that. But it's extremely interesting to do. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, so what do you think is, is left now in terms of what, what are the urgent things that are left? Um, in addition to what you're talking about now, are there some grammatical uh, pieces that are still not quite clear about the Akha language? Oh, you can always say more things about it and more examples. Yeah. But see, I have, I have the death rituals and I have many sickness rituals. And the shamanic texts I haven't touched yet. I have touched it, but not in this talk, I mean. Mm-hmm. The difference between the shaman, the nipa, and the pima, the ritual specialist. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a difference in the contents of it. The nipa doesn't deal with this. That only the pima's work. Mm-hmm. The pima cannot pass the borderline between the living and dead. He has to go back. That shows the road to the dead one. Uh-huh. Shows that the, it says that it's a buffalo attacking me, but not you. Right. I won't come until I f- my, my youngest daughter has found a husband. Not until my youngest son has found a wife. I go back home. Uh-huh. You go on. But the, the Nipa, the, sh- the shaman, can pass that line. Make a, make a mental journey to pass over the landscape, the landscape all, all around the mountains, mm-hmm. see it all, and comes back, gliding on a, a rope mm-hmm. back to the house. She doesn't go anywhere. She sits there all the time. I've, done many, I've visited that many times a different nipa. Mm-hmm. It could be male and female. The pima is always a male. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, are there, there there have been other people who've worked on Akha? There's an anthropologist you've spoken of uh, several times, and are there some uh, Akha speakers themselves uh, that have been working on? Akha? Not as far as I know yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apart from the ones who are reciting it, and that's, uh, I think it, the young ones don't often don't know the ritual texts. Right. Right. So this will be a... So more and more are spread in towns and we're looking for work. Mm-hmm. But um, so it's important to write it down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. So, um, so we've come to visit you here in, in order to help with uh, the preservation and also to give access to the materials that you've collected through your lifetime. And so do you have some some thoughts about what you'd like people to do with your this legacy, this the, the materials that you've collected? Have you? I think make it more, it's most important to make it available to all the archives mm-hmm. mm-hmm. by media, so you, they are no electricity, some of them have school training, mm-hmm. and to know it, to learn it themselves. And then listen to all the various, the various rituals. Mm-hmm. And it's, they, they can record now by video, it uh, wasn't uh, in my, my time. Mm-hmm. And make recordings of rituals. Mm-hmm. You've got to be there. Right. When I was there, I couldn't stop seeing, mm-hmm. make a ritual, I couldn't stop saying, stop what are you doing? Right, right. I have to see it and see it and then write it down asking questions about it for years afterwards uh-huh. to understand what I saw. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't really take photographs either, that wouldn't, that wasn't appropriate most of the time? No, it wasn't appropriate at all yeah. to do. Yeah. I have to wait for something to happen in night time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I took a lot of photos, and recorded a lot. Right. So the rest of my life I'm going to spend on those texts. It's available for researchers in the future to continue my work. Absolutely. We'll we'll find new ways of new approaches and to to, uh, keep the culture from from living, have material Mm -hmm. 
to be able for everybody to go in and hear it. Well, thank you so much for uh, the time that you've spent with us, and um, we do hope that soon the Corsal Aka language resource will be a living thing that could be sh shared with the Aka people as well as with other researchers, and that you can continue to work on the language uh, with by yourself or with young researchers who can work with you. And when things are made digitally available to you, hopefully they'll be easier even for you to access and find so that you can start uh, building on what you've already done. I hope it's very important what you're doing in this project because uh, to make it available for everybody. Mm -hmm. I can put it down and then people can continue working with it after me. Yeah. Yeah. And for the archives to hear it, and then at the end of the time they will, they will have a, their own specialists coming with higher education, they have to write it down themselves. That they can work on it themselves, yes. right? Right, yes. Which they will always know it better than I ever will learn. It's maybe, uh, you know, the only recordings that are out there, so it's very important work that you've yes. done. Yes. So, yeah, that's great. I think so, because they have other means now, can do it. Yes, nowadays people can use their phones. Their electricity. Like you see what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Any last thoughts that you... I don't think I'll be traveling anymore back there because I can't physically do it. But I think I will spend the rest of my life trying to make the things I have available for everybody to use. Mm -hmm. Most of the most inf important consultants are dead by now, mm -hmm. and the NIPA, the ones I used, uh, I recorded, well, many of them are dead by now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But their names are kept by me at least, and when I write it down, I always tell where, where, who they were. Right. right. So, maybe so I'm happy also I can live in the archives so that so the archives can hear it themselves. Yes. And continue working with it so that it's not forgotten. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And then we're going to probably talk to Soren as well. So, yeah. All right. Yes, thank you. Thank you.